Is there any flavor better for late fall than something with cranberries? I honestly don't know. I really love incorporating cranberries into my macarons, but it is a little bit tricky because the flavor is bold enough and yet it is a little bit easy to overwhelm with other things and there are a lot of things that it pairs great with and other things that it's not a great match for just because of how tart it is. So anyway, I'm making a cranberry orange spiced jam or compote for the inside. I am using frozen cranberries. You can use fresh if you want. I am using some fresh orange juice. You obviously could use some from the store that you previously juiced. No worries at all. Um, and this is something, as you see, I'm adding all this to my bowl. When I'm making a jam or compote, if I have the time, especially when using frozen fruit, I like to let everything kind of macerate together and let the fruit kind of thaw to room temperature, get everything really nice and juicy. But if you're running short on time or you don't want to do this step, you absolutely can just throw it immediately onto the stove. It might just take a little bit longer if you are starting with the frozen cranberries as I did. Some sort of cranberry jam or jelly or sauce or compote is so common at a standard American Thanksgiving. Um, if you are new to that, if you've never made anything with cranberries before, they're a really bizarre little fruit, uh, but actually really easy to cook with. Basically, you just want to keep this on like a medium-ish heat um, until the cranberries pop open. So the reason I included the orange juice in here is just to have a little bit of liquid. I know I have that sugar in there, but while the cranberries are still whole, I like having the orange juice just to provide a little bit of liquid so things don't like completely <laughs> explode in the beginning. So anyway, I'm just going to cook this until those start popping open. The cranberries are not super juicy on the inside, but once they pop open, it starts turning from just a saucepan full of cranberries into more of a genuine compote or jam. There is not a lot of liquid in here, and because cranberries are not particularly juicy, whether you get them fresh or frozen, this is a really, really quick compote to make. So my goals here are to kind of turn the cranberries from this whole state into a cranberry kind of mush. And I want to make sure that the sugar is completely dissolved. And I want to make sure I get this to a jammy consistency that is pipeable. Otherwise, I'm not too worried about timing things or reaching certain temperatures or anything like that. So I'm just going to let this go. After you sense that the cranberries are starting to burst open and it's cooking further, you can turn down the heat a little bit um, and that will kind of help in the long run if you have this on a medium or high heat while you continue to cook it. The cranberries are more likely to burn especially because there is such a low content of liquid in here. If you have a really high temperature you're gonna get kind of a weird texture maybe burnt texture on the bottom where the top um, especially if you're not stirring it constantly the top cranberries might not cook as much so yeah, just keep an eye out for that as you are cooking.
as you can see here the cranberries have gotten really nice and jammy looking if you want a completely smooth jam you can go in on this with an immersion blender or put it into your food processor once it's cooled down uh, but i really like to keep it a little bit on the chunkier side and i'm just gonna cover that with plastic wrap and get it into my refrigerator to chill Meanwhile, I am going to create an orange white chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. So Swiss meringue means I've got a double boiler here on top of that in the bowl. I've got egg whites and sugar, giving that a whisk immediately. Egg whites and sugar can get a little bit weird if you combine them, but don't give them a good stir. So I'm just going to make sure to whisk that through. As you can see here, they're looking a little bit kind of gloopy and the uh, color is a little bit strange but as I get this on my double boiler it's going to thin down a lot the texture is going to change quite dramatically looking a lot more liquid the color will change it will start looking a bit frothy and once that hits about 50 degrees celsius then I'm going to take it off the heat so I can transfer into the bowl of my KitchenAid if you don't have a stand mixer or want to use a hand mixer this is a really good recipe recipe to do that with and you can actually just keep it in that same bowl it's completely up to you and what tools you have at your disposal in your kitchen with this swiss meringue i'm just going to let it whip on kind of a medium to medium high heat until it gets really nice and fluffy and it's cooled to just above room temperature at that point i'm going to start adding in the butter that of course is at room temperature as you can see you want to be able to push your thumb really gently into it and it should just squish down completely if it is any colder you will have a lot harder time incorporating this into your buttercream and it could cause the buttercream kind of to break or be really lumpy and it will take a little bit more effort and maybe some heat treatment to bring it back to a really nice consistency after all of the butter is in there that's when i'm going to start adding in the other flavor some fresh orange zest and some melted white chocolate as you can see here, I have that already sitting on my counter at the ready. Um, I recommend melting your white chocolate chips maybe while you have your egg white mixture on your double boiler just to make sure that by the time you add it in the white chocolate is cooled but not <laughs> cold right you don't want to add a solid in you want this to be liquid but you really do not want it to be hot we're going to all this effort to create a really nice light fluffy buttercream that as you can see here is really starting to come together and and if I add pour in a like really hot white chocolate, I'm going to melt the butter and that's really going to ruin this consistency that we've created. Sometimes buttercream can look like it's not going to come together. Don't keep adding butter, <laughs> um, especially if you've added the amount that a recipe uh, identifies as being sufficient for the recipe. Yes, for everybody, depending on what butter you're using, you may end up adding more or less than the recipe indicates. But if you've added what the recipe says and it still is looking quite soft, let it whip for several minutes before you panic it totally can come together after you have your buttercream all the butter is incorporated then you can add in that slightly cooled melted white chocolate and some fresh orange zest i am mirroring that orange flavor that i added into the cranberry compote i really like it when i have things that are either complementing each other or kind of mirroring each other and because cranberry can be a little bit of a trickier one to add into buttercream absolutely possible but it takes a little bit more effort um i thought the orange would be really nice especially without white chocolate buttercream if you wanted to add in a few spices as well i added in cinnamon and cloves to the compote if you want to mirror that in your buttercream as well or if you want to go for a spicier buttercream um, and add in cinnamon cloves ginger cardamom any of those things that would also be really really lovely buttercream as you can see i've switched to my paddle attachment just to make sure that this is really smooth and creamy going with that paddle attachment for 5 to 15 minutes really helps smooth out 
any buttercream. This one is no exception. And now that I've got that white chocolate orange buttercream and my cranberry compote, I am ready to fill my macarons. I just have a, a kind of a dark red shell here just to kind of let everybody know that it's a cranberry macaron. And I want to pipe the buttercream with a French star tip here. So to make sure that the cranberry compote doesn't squish out, I'm just creating a ring border around the macarons. And then I will pipe the cranberry compote into the center. I really like using a tiny French star tip like this with macaron shells. I think that when you squish the macarons it still leaves a really nice kind of um, outside that you can really see especially if you want to keep just a really nice plain simple shell if there's nothing going on on the outside i think using a star tip like this is a great way to add a little something extra to your shell so that they're not just completely basic looking um, but you also don't have to go to a lot of extra effort to add any decoration to the outside after I have all of my buttercream piped around the outside, I'm adding in that cranberry compote. Depending how much compote you want to add and the ratio of buttercream to compote, you can use a larger or smaller tip for the buttercream. You can uh, not use a piping tip and just have a really, really small edge around there. If you want a ton, like a really large amount of filling, you can pipe two rings of buttercream so that there's this ginormous core of cranberry. Just keep in mind, cranberry is one of those flavors, even with the sugar and the orange juice and the spices, that it is generally quite tart and it can be a little bit overwhelming. It's usually something you want a relative relatively small amount unless you are a cranberry fiend i don't know maybe you are so depending on your preference and what kind of balance you like you might want to add in more or less of that these can be sandwiched and matured in the refrigerator just like normal and make sure to stick them into your freezer if you're not going to be consuming them within the next week or so thank you so much for watching and staying to the end of this video i really appreciate you being here if you give this a try make sure to tag me on instagram at maddie brame and if you're not already subscribed down below make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos until next time have a wonderful day bye